Yo, my name is Sven, and today I'm gonna show you guys the 2x2 variant of the shell. Now, this is the first version, and it's non multi TC. It has inner peak downs, and just like the 3x3 version, it is disguised, meaning from the top, it does not look like a 2x2. Also, if you haven't seen my original 3x3 shell videos, make sure you do. Those are simply a 3x3 variant of the base that you're gonna see now. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the video. I was calling out to me. Alright, let's talk about the base. Now the first and main key feature of this base is that it's based around my shell concept. Meaning that this 2x2 is actually disguised. Now there is already a base series on my channel for the 3x3 variant. If you're unfamiliar with that, I would really recommend to go watch that. Now there's a couple of reasons you'd want to have a disguised base. But the main and the most important reason to me is that it kind of creates a confusion. No one really knows that this is a 2x2. People that want to raid you are gonna land on the roof and they're not gonna immediately realize that it's a two by two this way you're basically fooling the raider and that's one of the reasons why you want to have that now, i don't want to talk about the original three by three variant of this concept although there's one important thing that you should know the two by two that we're going to be building here is basically a combination of the v1 shell and the v2 shell the base has a single tc unlike the v2 shell but the initial core of the base is actually honeycomb so the two by two is honeycombed now this honeycomb is basically a must at this point. And the reason why this 2x2 shell V1 is not multi TC'd is mostly because I want to keep it simple in the first version. And for those wondering, yes, there is a multi TC version and that will come on my channel very soon as well. Now let's go through the base and I'll show you guys some more features that the base has to offer. I would also quickly like to note that I have once again not placed any deployables such as furnaces and boxes. I'm gonna let you guys decide where you'd want that. Also, you can see that the base is entirely metal. This because the base in the end will be metal as well. I am a fan of using stone and other materials in the build. Although I feel like it's irrelevant at this point considering we're building a base that's made for online raid defense particularly. Now with this idea, I can really 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 only recommend to build this base if you're very active and you expect to be raided a lot. Also parts of the base like the airlock are pretty much just made quickly. There's no idea behind it and I would really recommend for you to use what you like, airlocks you like, loot rooms you like, etc. Alright so here we have the base and as you can see the basic airlock right here. And after the airlock you immediately enter the peak downs. This goes all the way around, um, pretty much a bit the same as how it is on the Shell V2, um, where we have the inner peak down separated, and this is this has become a this has become a very like prominent thing in my base builds, because the way it works is if you're getting raided pummeled from the side, you don't lose control over the entire base. You pretty much only lose control over that segment that they're uh, raiding. And the same goes on the inner peak downs um, up there. But yeah, that's kind of the idea here. So it's a bit more expensive. You could decide to leave everything open. Although I would really, really recommend it. Now there's two ways out. As you can see, this is one. And on the other side, there's one as well. And here is the way into the original 2x2. Two two. As you can see, we're entering two, some, two single doors. You can make that double doors as well if you want. And here we have our first kind of loot room. Now this is kind of really like where you put all your unimportant stuff. And you can see on the right we have our jump up. Now here behind this window is where your first TC will be. Right here in this corner. And it's very specific. You have to place the TC right here in this corner. Why? Because if you're getting raided and you have sealed off this window, which you should. 
including the embrasure, uh, it's really hard for raiders to see if your TC is actually there. So, especially if there's a garage door here. But initially, raiders are going to expect your TC to be there. So, they're going to blow all this. And that's what you want them to do. Um, of course, our TC will be moved up during the build later on. Uh, so, yeah. Here we have the second floor. And in the honeycomb, we embed furnace areas. You can put three furnaces in each triangle here. Make sure to close it always off with an embrasure. Making the raid cost pretty much the same as the wall. Also, two loot rooms here and then the next jump up. I like to use the triangles as jump ups, although you don't have to do this as well. Now here we have on third floor, we have the actual TC and we'll talk about the upkeep in a second. Another furnace area here, you can do your silver or your high qual, etc. I would recommend to put the tier three right here. But again, you guys can figure out yourself where you want to put stuff. If you jump up here, we are going to enter the inner peak down floor. The reason this is armored is the same. Um, the reason why the walls down there in the airlock are armored is because some people try to take shortcuts raiding and they blow straight into the airlock and you want to prevent that. So the same goes here. If they realize that there's doors down here, they might decide to just blow this right here. Now this wall right here is pure honeycomb. So let's say you're getting top down. It's very expensive. Raiders can top down right here. Although it will be completely half walled, so it's not really worth it for them. And then again, the TC is in the honeycomb. So that means that if they top down, they don't get the TC immediately either. And here we have the inner peak down floor. And this area right here, I just use for like random stuff. Guns, you could put a bed here, but it's going to be a bit, a little bit eight. Um, so yeah, here we have the peak downs. And here you can see the front door. Now this peak down right here isn't extremely optimal although it is doable i like to have very, very small peaks um just because you can ex unexpect like the uh, raiders you can pick them from a lot of different angles especially here in the window it's also very important and to note that you can actually drop down these peak downs so yeah that's very useful little tip here if you want to prevent people from laddering up your um inner peak downs what you can do is you can find a siren light and research that. It's very cheap to craft. It's like three or four high qual. Although it costs like three rockets to destroy. So what you can do is place it right here and no one will be able to go through. Like this is not pickable. You have to boom this. It's almost like a stone wall basically. So a very, very good point if you don't want that to happen. Now here you have your first bedroom. I like to have the bedrooms here because of two reasons. One, if you're getting raided, you're very close to the inner peaks to defend your base. And two, you can drop down straight into the inner peaks and get out of your base if you need to do that fast. Second kind of bedroom here and the way up. And the third bedroom is here. Now, the reason there's a half wall here is because TC is right down here. Just a quickly note here, I'm mentioning where the TC is. I would really recommend to just randomly utilize the honeycomb for furnace areas and TCs. If you want to have the TC on bottom floor, you can do that. But I would really recommend to not have it on the exact same spot as I have. Continuing on, we're going to go upstairs through the ladder hatch. And you can see here, here the 2x2 two two turned into the triangles. Meaning the disguised kind of concept here. So we have full control here over our shooting floor. And the reason I use double doors here is because they're faster in opening and closing. If you're getting online raided, it's really, really aids to have to close and open garage doors. Especially on, on, on key areas here. Putting metal doors here, or armored if you want, of course, is really going to make the difference between you being able to pull off a play or not. And the garage doors usually give the raiders too much time to react and rocket you or kill you already. It's also very nice and uh, very good to have multiple ways out and in. I really like that. That allows you to, if you're getting raided, for example, you're getting pummeled from this side. You can still get out on your shooting floor on the other side without the raiders even seeing you. Allowing you to, for example, drop down and flank the, the, the raiders that are raiding you, etc. So on to the next floor, we have another ladder hatch. Now, you don't have to use ladder hatches. In this case, I... Thought it was useful on this case right here because of the wall right there. But you don't have to use them. 
can make just simple jump ups. Here we have our minicopter area. Speaks for itself a lot. And up here we have access to the roof. There's nothing on the roof. You know what to do there. Windmills, you know. I'm gonna leave that up to you guys as well. One more thing here is I'm a big fan of using windows here on the shooting floor. This allows you to see where the raiders are because you usually raiders will take your shooting floor. And it also uh, makes options for defending your raids and picking up windows, for example. Like it gives you options to make plays against your raiders. So that's basically it for the tour of the base. So let's talk about the upkeep and the building costs. Now I have mentioned some of this already. This is a base that you want to build when you're really active and you expect to be online rated a lot. For this reason, the whole base is metal and to fully build the whole base, you only need 65,000 metal fragments. Now the HQM really depends on what you upgrade. And of course you want to do this along the way of your wipe. The more HQM you get, the more you upgrade and the more you want to have HQM, the more you make HQM. In terms of upkeep, we're talking about all the armor doors I placed as well we are having a 25,000 metal fragments a day and I know you're gonna say yeah this is a lot but then again I'm gonna go out from the fact that you're building this because you're very active and because you expect to be raided etc next to that the upkeep I got it on was on 300 I really recommend to always stick to the 100 values when it comes to HQM this way you can optimally put upkeep in your TC without taking any more slots than needed per material so that's it for the upkeep and the explanation now Let's go and build it. Start by building a normal 2x2. Two two. Now in my case we're going to make everything metal. Like I explained earlier. And you want to add a airlock. Now since most of the stuff here is recorded also from top down. I will be building in not the right order that you want to do for a wipe. But you want to make sure there's a jump up here on the right. And I have built out the airlock already here. As you can see. Now what you do on bottom floor is you temporarily place the TC. I like to have a window because um, people cannot see the TC in that way if it's sealed off with an embrasure. After that you can put roofs and you can finish the jump up. Make sure you put a door there so it's secured. So you basically have two ways in and out and you have roof access for now. Now we're only temporarily placing the TC here because the idea is that we move it to a different spot later on. As it's quite weak to have it on the bottom floor. Also, for the jump ups, I like to have a triangle above. So you have to crouch through instead of that you can fully jump through. Um, that's because it allows you to put turrets above. And having turrets in your doorways, in your jump ups, is actually very strong against offline raiding. So make sure you place all the doors. I'm not doing that for the sake of this video. After you build the first floor, I would really recommend to build the honeycomb of the 2x2. You can also build another floor up instead if you like. But since this base is not multi tc it doesn't matter what you build, in what order. It's more like what you liked yourself the most. Just make sure you actually upgrade the honeycomb straight to metal. Uh, at least the parts that you don't have access to. Now you don't have to put floors in the honeycomb itself. It's quite unnecessary. It's not really going to make any difference to what they blow. Of course there's going to be floors on the parts where, for example, furnaces or other stuff is embedded in the honeycomb. So this is the third floor that we're building now and on the third floor we're gonna have the TC. I like to start by uh, building around but it's not really a nice order to do when you're actually doing this in a wipe I guess. So another little furnace area over there for sulfur and here the way up with another triangle above so you have to crouch put another turret up there as well. And now I'm actually gonna start by putting the roof on as well. So I'm going to close off the honeycomb. You'll see that in a second. TC will be in that triangle. Make sure you have a teammate ready to place the TC. You never know. <laughs> I like to have the TC here in the honeycomb. But I would recommend to always put it in a different spot. Now after this you can basically put floor frames. Put your jump up here. It's very important there are some doors. Because otherwise it's it can be quite weak uh, if you're getting raided from the top two doors which is also a possibility put a garage door there and the reason i'm not building up there is because it might fuck up the uh, roof later on so make sure you don't build up there have your way up like how i have it you can seal everything off like i did that's basically uh, a bit of a, like you could see that as a starter variant all right, so now we're gonna start by adding the honeycomb. And I like to start this way with the triangles at your door. 
You do the exact same on the opposite side. Now after that, I use the squares on both sides and then we put a square in the middle and connect two more triangle foundations to that. Then we have the front doors. I like to have two ways out and or in. Um, and we wall off the rest with metal walls in this case. Then we have the airlock and again the airlock is very preference based. I like to have it like this. Simple but doable. I don't really care so much about airlocks. Uh, but if you do, make sure you build it more extensively. Then we can just continue uh, building the walls, walls upwards. And we want to do that until we reach peak down level. So once you reach peak down level, we're pretty much set to start building the peak downs. Now you don't have to build the fourth level of the walls before the peak downs. In some cases, in some builds, that's necessary because, or you cannot build up the walls yet because the peak downs might mess up the wall placement. Now here we're gonna build the windows that you can peek through. And the easiest way of doing it is like I do. I know I'm using fly, but um, you should be able to manage to do this yourself in the following way. Now these peak, peak downs are uh, not optimal on those sides where the windows are. That's why the windows are there. Um, but I plan to, to fully fix that in a V2 variant. It's just that the V1 here that you see that we're building is very simple. And I try to keep it compact. And since it only has one, multi one TC, uh, I don't have the cracks from the multi TCs either. So the peak downs are uh, very limited in how you can do them. Now I like to have these segments that we talked about earlier. So that's what I'm building now. In my opinion, they are very important and they are very strong having them. You might as well have them. They're easy to put. Doesn't cost a lot of metal. So after you build these segments, you're basically done. You can just start building up. Now we're going to build the peak downs and I like to start in the easiest in the center over here on both sides. Connect three triangles and then build the way out here. Now it's very important you build the peak downs in this particular order or any kind of peak downs because as you can see that triangle over there that I just placed is overlapping and sometimes it won't allow you to place particular walls or door frames etc. So when you're watching a video of someone building peak downs make sure you follow his exact same order. It's really gonna mess you up if you don't. Now adding a half wall layer here you could if you're a big group make bedrooms here instead although I would really recommend to have the half wall layer in case you're getting top downs like actual top downs. So make sure you have a half wall layer there. And now we are going to build back the roof. And this is the part where the disguised form shapes, so to say. As you can see, we're using squares now instead of triangles below. And this way we are filling up the whole roof without maintaining the same pattern, so to say. We're not following the foundations under. And that is what makes this base disguised. No one will be able to tell that you, will have, that you have a 2x2. Two two. In this case, we're using a ladder hatch because that's the most convenient way to make the way up here. I'm not a fan of using ladder hatches, although in this case, it was quite nice to do so. Now we start by adding or by filling up the top floor, the inner peak down floor. And unfortunately, you cannot put all the frames there, as you can see. Now here we have a bedroom and you can basically utilize this the way you want to. Again, of course, I like to have the bedrooms here. There's not a lot of beds fitting here. Actually, there's only one bed be able to fit here. So necessarily this would, this would be a three person base if you count the beds. Although again, it really depends on what you do. In this center here, you can actually put two half walls because of the way it connects. Do that for extra stability, very important. And for the rest, we're using these kind of slabs. So after that, we're going to start building the top floor. There's not really a logic in this. You can do it in a lot of different ways. Although I like to have them the following way.
for me, the nice thing about v, uh, about peak downs, in my opinion, is that they are kind of symmetrical. So that's why I'm building them like this. You can also build them in like kind of a rotation. Uh, there's a lot of ways. But. So this is the footprint kind of for the inner or for the outer peak down. Sorry. Put two windows here. This next one will be your way up. Again, you can use half walls and put the floor instead of a ladder hatch. Make sure you secure this. Now, again, I really like to use the windows here because it allows you to see people if they are on your shooting floor. It happens a lot these days with the helis, people flying in, you name it. So put frames is how I put them. And after that, you can actually close this whole thing off. Make sure you place a ladder hatch as well. You can also put the frames here like I did to avoid people from splashing straight down. Even though this thing is disguised and it's half watt, you still want to kind of like make sure they don't. But on the other hand, you could also leave the frames out in the center. So they are actually might consider topping down instead. And that will make the raid insanely expensive, which is good for you. So put frames all around here for extra stability. It's very important. If heli uh, rockets something or if you're getting raided, this will allow you to or this will not make the shooting floor like entirely break it will only break in like let's just say less parts basically so i like to start by putting the um door frames first and then the windows because the windows alone won't have enough stability and after that we just basically fill up the whole thing except for the ladder hatch or the ladder hatch area <music> Okay, so when you filled up the whole thing, make sure you put that ladder hatch. <laughs> and after that, we can start by building the top, top floor. Now, what you do here, again, is really up to yourself. Uh, this case, I'm not putting a window here because it's not as strong and as important. And the reason why is I don't just don't want people to see that there's a ladder hatch. Ladder hatches are quite weak and it might incent like them or the raiders to actually door raid you if they know you have ladder hatches. So that's why I'm walling it off. Double door frames here for the helis on both sides. I am a very active heli player, so to say. I like to collect them. So I have a pretty big hanger up here. You don't even need this whole thing. Although I would recommend to have some kind of way up, especially two ways up, two separate ways. Because if you're getting raided, it can be very strong to also have roof access, of course, and multiple ways of getting roof access. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Now, with this video, I've tried some new editing techniques and some new voiceover kind of ways. So if you have noticed any changes, both in a negative way or a positive way, make sure to leave the feedback for me. I would really appreciate that so I can improve my channel and my content. Also, make sure to check out my other base builds and especially the other shells, the original one where the shell is based on the 3x3. I do also plan on making a dedicated video tutorial kind of on what the logic is in building a disguised base so to say there's a few techniques you can use to build back the roof both with one tc but also in a multi tc form now you could argue that this base is way too expensive you could argue that the disguised point makes no sense but again i'm building this base based on my own experience in rust i feel like a lot of you guys can actually benefit from this and i hope this video even inspires you to start making base build videos yourself now that was it for this one we're almost at 9,000 subscribers, so if you'd like to see more or support me in general, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what base design you'd like to see next, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.